There are limitless stories about mischievous children and their wild behaviors in today's environment of constant change. None of them, though, really measures up to the myth of the world's most terrible child. Even the most experienced adults shiver at the confusion and damage they could leave. Welcome to True Crime, a channel dedicated to showing what really happens in the world of cartels, mafia, serial killers, and so much more. True Crime content. Our True Crime team dissects the details of the crime and brings them to you. Understand the dark underworld of the world's most dangerous drug cartels and cartel leaders, mob bosses, dangerous gangs, serial killers, and underworld mobsters. Let's get started. Amarjeet Sada, the youngest serial killer in history. Amarjeet is originally from Mushahar, a small village in Bihar, India. Amarjeet was more of a quiet person. He enjoyed going on lone explorations, climbing trees and wandering across the area. So his aunt came by one day. She needs to temporarily leave her child with the family because she started a new gig in the city. Amarjeet's mother leaves and walks to the nearby market. This is where the light fades. His younger cousin was left to be babysat by Amarjeet. He even begins to playfully pinch and beat the infant and finds it fun when the baby cries. Next, he closes the baby's airway by placing his hands around its throat. The infant, out of breath, begins to cry out once again. Amarjeet killed his cousin, covered the baby's body with grass, and went back home. When he later told his mother what he had done, she was shocked. His father physically punished him. Surprisingly, though, they made up a fiction for the aunt rather than calling the police. Then, when their parents were sleeping, he strangled his sister, who was eight months old. Amarjeet performed another horrible act on Kushbu, a six-month-old girl, in 2007. After confessing to his horrific crime a few hours later, Amarjeet showed the community where he had buried her. After being caught by the authorities, Amarjeet admitted to killing his cousin and sister in the past. Amarjeet remained silent and weirdly smiling while in custody. He was put in a juvenile facility until he turned 18 because he was not allowed to be imprisoned under Indian law. Unexpectedly, he was set free at age 16, and nobody knows where he is now. Anissa Wire and Morgan Geyser the Slender Man stabbing is one frightening story you won't soon forget. 2014 saw it in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Anissa Wire and Morgan Geyser, two 12-year-old girls, devised this strange scheme in an attempt to gain favor. Imagine this, a made-up personality called Slender Man, a made-up guy that looks like your worst nightmare raised to a stilt. He is as thin as a twig and has this featureless white face. These girls fooled their friend Peyton Leutner into thinking it was a simple game of hide-and-seek, but this is no kid's game. She is taken far into David's Park by them and stabbed Waukesha 19 times when he was close by. With a five-inch blade, the attackers brutally stabbed Peyton Leutner 19 times across her entire body while holding her down. Despite the fact that two of the stabs struck critical organs, she miraculously lived. After going through that terrifying experience, Peyton Leutner was able to drag herself to a nearby road. Luckily, a cyclist saw her there and called 911, saving her life. They are discovered waiting close to a furniture store, which is approximately five miles distant. After around five hours, with the specific blade they had used. They thought they would meet at his slender mansion, the home of the mythical Slender Man, 200 miles distant in the Nicolette National Forest. Throughout the questioning, Morgan displayed no regret. Anissa may have looked regretful, but they both thought their horrific act was a kind of respect for Slender Man. Let's now discuss the legal journey that Anissa Wire and Morgan Geyser underwent. Geyser attempted a conditional release in May 2023, but decided against it. In August, moved its focus to Wire. In 2016, she entered a not guilty plea at first due to a mental illness. However, a year later, she unexpectedly alters direction and enters a guilty plea to a reduced charge of attempted second-degree homicide. Convinced of her mental illness, the jury committed her to the 25-year Winnebago Mental Health Institute. But wait in 2021, the story takes a turn. The judge gives her conditional release, finding that she is no longer a threat. Kristen Pittman when Kristen Avery Pittman was found guilty in 2005 of killing her grandparents, Joe and Joy Pittman, she was dealt a severe blow by the legal system. Kristen was only 12 years old when it happened in 2001. Kristen had already experienced two home runs, dabbled with suicide ideas, and even had a run-in with the police at that young age. She was transferred to an institution meant for children. She stayed there for six days and was given a prescription for Paxil for what they described as minor depression. This is where the plot really starts to get serious. Kristen gained some stability when she was sent from sunny Oxford, Florida, to live with her grandparents in Chester, South Carolina. This is where things get complex. There were no patient samples available for her Chester doctor. Although switching them out in that way, both are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs. Not the best idea. Kristen feels strange nearly right away. Her sister even labels her as manic. Her body is experiencing an unusual scorching sensation that requires pain medication to manage. What is the doctor's recommendation? Increase your daily dosage of Zoloft. 
from 25 to 50 milligrams. The long list of possible adverse effects of Zoloft for children includes, but is not limited to, worsened depression and strange nightmares. Kristen's day was already getting out of control on November 28, 2001. She's choking a fellow student, starting fights on the school bus, and even disturbing a church piano player. That evening, she does the unthinkable after receiving a paddle from her grandfather for attempting to force her out of her room. She enters the bedroom of her grandparents and murders them with the shotgun. Then she uses some paper and a candle to light the house on fire. Before driving, she takes the car keys, her dog, her grandparents' guns, and $33. But her progress is limited. She gets stuck and gets caught two counties away. Three years after the horrifying crime, on January 31, 2005, Kristen's trial got underway. After a trial, Kristen was found guilty and given a 30-year sentence on February 15, 2005. However, she reached a plea agreement in December 2010 and admitted to voluntary manslaughter. 25 years was her new sentence, which included time previously spent. Pittman transitioned and legally changed her name to Kristen Avery Pittman while she was imprisoned. Ashley Martinson Ashley Rose Martinson committed an unthinkable crime the day after turning 17. Tragically, she ended her own mother's and stepfather's life. Subsequently, she acknowledged her guilt on two counts of second-degree intentional killing. Before that terrible day, Martinson lived with her mother, stepfather, two stepsisters, and a half-sister. Martinson's younger siblings claim that her stepfather, Thomas Tony Ayers, verbally abused her. Ayers had previously abused his wife and his biological daughters verbally and physically. Martinson shockingly added that she had been sexually and physically assaulted for two years by her mother's ex-boyfriend. Experts concluded that she suffered from depression and post-traumatic stress disorder. It is important to remember that Martinson's stepfather had a criminal past that included convictions for a variety of crimes, including sexual assault, kidnapping, and domestic abuse. Using a shotgun, she killed him. Martinson stabbed her mother to death with a knife when she went to look into the shooting. Martinson entered a plea agreement in 2016 to accept second-degree murder instead of first-degree homicide and false imprisonment. She received 23 years in prison, followed by 17 years under supervision. 40 years was what the prosecution requested. Her defense used family abuse as an argument for eight. Judge Michael Bloom believed that her actions could not be justified by her past. She's now a prisoner at Teichita Correctional in Wisconsin, where claims she's safe and happy, and even got her high school certificate. Nehemiah Griego. Can you remember the terrible shooting that occurred in 2013 in South Valley, New Mexico? Five individuals were discovered dead inside a residence by police on the evening of January 19th. At their place of residence, 15-year-old Nehemiah Griego shot and murdered his parents and three siblings. It all began at midnight when he shot his mother with a 22 rifle. When his younger brother woke up, Nehemiah told him that their mother had been shot. His brother, however, didn't believe him at first until Nehemiah showed him her face, which was covered in blood. Then Nehemiah used the same weapon to shoot his brother and his two younger sisters in the head. After working at a homeless shelter for a shift, Griego walked downstairs to wait for his father to get home. Then, shot his father several times when he came with a semi-automatic AR-15 weapon equipped with a scope. Nehemiah first fooled his fiancée and church officials into believing his parents passed away in a vehicle accident. Afterward, he said he discovered their bodies and departed the area. He eventually confessed to the murders. As a result, a judge gave him a life sentence. Grego's attorneys challenged this ruling on the grounds that the conviction amounted to unusually harsh punishment, but the court rejected both arguments. He was sentenced to an adult prison term in the state of Washington in 2019, after a district court judge ruled that he could not be treated as a juvenile. Our thoughts and prayers go out to those involved. We hope you enjoyed our true crime overview of the most evil kid in the world. Be sure to be a true crime subscriber and hit the bell icon to never miss another true crime video. Leave a comment and a like to show your support. Until next time, stay safe. And if you have a true crime story you would love to see, please be sure to leave in the comments below. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.